Hello everyone and welcome to this lecture. In this lecture, we are going to cover the basics of cloud computing and we're going to learn what is cloud computing and who actually uses it. All right, so let's get started. So what is cloud computing? So cloud computing is the on-demand delivery of services such as compute and storage over the internet with pay-as-you-go pricing. And basically by doing this, what you're doing is that you are simply leasing the services from somebody else. So in case of AWS, what you're simply doing is that instead of buying physical servers and, and computers, you are simply leasing them from Amazon Web Services. And that's it. You pay as you go. No strings attached, no capital expenditure. You just pay for what you use, which is incredible. So what you could do is that you can leverage compute power, you can lever leverage storage, you can leverage databases, and you can pay, pay that for as needed, basically. So again, you pay as what you, for what you need. Well, if you're not using, let's say, uh, compute, that's it. You're not going to be paying for it, which is amazing. Okay. All right. So the next question is, who uses cloud computing? So many companies with various sizes rely on cloud computing for many applications. So you can actually use it for virtual desktops. Again, instead of buying, you know, computers, you can leverage or lease test desktops from somebody else. You can use it for storage and data backup. You can use it for big data analytics, for disaster recovery, for emails, and for machine learning as well to do forecasting and predictions. Let's take a look at an example. For instance, banks and financial institutions rely on cloud computing to prevent fraudulent transactions in real time. So again, this is just one example. You can use it for whatever application, especially with AWS. It's literally used for streaming services, for uh, data analytics, for any machine learning application. If you want to do, let's say, face recognition, image detection, if you want to do any of these applications, you will be able to rely on AWS to do that for you. So what are the benefits of cloud computing? I highlighted this slide here in the red star because this is quite important. And this is actually most likely you will find a question on that in the AWS Cloud Practitioner Certification Exam. So first benefit is agility. So cloud computing empowers companies to be more agile. So as I mentioned before, instead of buying physical hardware and software, and go through all the hassle and headache of setting them up that might take months or even maybe a year, even if it works. Sometimes, you know, you want it to build the service and it actually after, you, after all that investment, it might not even work to start with. Cloud computing will empower companies and give them access to numerous technologies which enable faster deployment and innovation. So simply put, in minutes, Companies can provision and deploy resources such as compute, storage, and database. Again, instead of waiting for months and paying millions of dollars in the beginning upfront, you can just lease it. And with just a bunch of clicks, as I'm going to show you guys later, you will be able to provision resources. You can leverage compute, you can leverage storage, you can create databases in just a couple of minutes, which is pretty scary and amazing at the same time. This empowers companies to be more agile and give them freedom to experiment with new ideas much, much faster. So that's the first step, which is agility. The second benefit of um, AWS specifically and in general of cloud computing, whether it's like, you know, like uh, offered by AWS or any other uh, company or cloud uh, provider is elasticity. So cloud computing allows for scaling and shrinking resources based on demand. So one of the problems uh, when you, let's say, uh, st starting up as a startup, for example, is that you actually don't know how many customers will be using your service. You don't know. So should I buy maybe like 10 servers? Should I buy 100 servers or maybe 1,000 servers? Uh, I don't know. And what I wanted to do is I wanted to actually be more elastic. So I wanted to maybe like if, for example, let's say at night, I'm not using much. I know that my customers are, let's say, in the U.S., for example. And between, let's say, maybe um, 10, uh, 10 p.m. 
until 6 a.m., nobody actually uses, let's say, my service. So why should I pay for it? Why my servers should be running if nobody is using them? And that's the power of cloud computing, is that you can actually scale. You can actually, like, you know, go up and, and increase, you know, like your, your, um, your, and the number of instances if you have more demand. And you can scale down as well and save cost if there is no that much demand. And that's pretty, and that's very, very important and will result in massive savings of even more than 65%. Therefore, there is no need to over-provision resources up front, and that's one of the benefits of cloud computing. The third benefit is cost savings. Cloud computing trades capital expenses, such as buying physical servers for variable expenses. So you can achieve massive savings with economies of scale. And the fourth point is deploy globally in minutes. So in AWS, in the case of AWS, AWS infrastructure is available everywhere, all over the globe. So, well, I want to deploy maybe like, you know, my new app, let's say in Brazil. Okay, so you can just do that and you can go global in minutes, which is uh, incredible. And companies can deploy services in any corner of the planet in minutes by leveraging the power of cloud. They will be able to place applications near the customer which will be critical for latency and performance. Again, latency, when I mean, when, when I say latency, that means I wanted my, uh, let's say when you open, for example, Facebook, you want it to have fast response. You want it to have basically like, you know, like a good user experience. So if you have all your infrastructure, let's say here in North America, and you want to offer services, your service in China, you need to have and leverage the power of AWS and using their infrastructure everywhere. So you wanna deploy your services as well, let's say in servers that are close to customers, let's say in China in this case. So that's why you would be able to leverage the, um, the global infrastructure of AWS all over the world, and you can do that again in minutes. All right, okay, so what is the AWS value proposition? Again, this is quite important. So AWS empowers enterprises and individuals to be more agile. You will be able to move faster, dramatically decrease IT cost, and reach global scale in minutes. AWS offers multiple services. You will be able to leverage compute, storage, database, analytics, and machine learning. And AWS cloud services helps enterprises and individuals optimize cost to match their needs. So again, even if your need changes, even if you think, well, my actually maybe my service, let's say, you know, didn't work that well in this certain region, well, I can just get rid of it. I can just get rid of these instances. And I don't have to um, basically uh, pay upfront for any of the services. So you don't need to go through all the headaches of having complex licensing and pay for large capital upfront. And AWS offers on-demand, pay as you go, and reservation-based pay payment models. Again, these are very important. So I highly recommend that you guys read the pricing white paper here. Okay, I actually have it open. And this white paper, I highly recommend that you guys go through it. Okay, it's very interesting. It actually covers all the value proposition of AWS, and it covers as well the different pricing for um, details of different services okay we're gonna go through this paper uh in quite in quite details in the pricing domain okay all right okay so let's keep going with the aws value proposition so aws offers pay as you go pricing approach for most of its cloud services which is over 160 services think of it as you are you know paying for your gas and electricity you just pay per use or pay as you use them. Well, if you turn off your lights, if you turn off your air conditioner, for example, you won't be charged for, for it. You won't be charged utilities, for example. And that's in the same fashion how AWS works. So you don't need to be locked in in any long-term contract with any complex licensing. And with AWS, enterprises and individuals will only pay for the service they need as long as they use them and without requiring, requiring any long-term contract or complex licensing. Simply put, if you stop using your service, no additional cost or any termination fees will be incurred. 
So you don't have to pay in the beginning and you don't have to pay at the end, which is amazing. You just note strings attached. You just, you know, like pay as you go and you can as well reduce cost as you use more. And we're going to be covering that again in great details in the pricing uh, domain. All right. Okay. And that's all what I have for this lecture. I hope you guys enjoyed it. In the next lecture, we are going to cover the types of cloud computing. So please stay tuned and please enjoy AWS Cloud Practitioner certification course. And I will see you guys in the next lecture.